How many people? They are one, two, three, four, five. In October 2020, a chemical tanker was boarded by pirates in the Gulf of Guinea, off the coast of West Africa. As the pirates made their way onto the deck, the crew from the Philippines scrambled to the vessel's safety room. Cramped inside, the crew agonized as the pirates tried to force their way in. After a 24-hour ordeal, the pirates abandoned the ship. Many haven't been as lucky. In January 2021, heavily armed pirates successfully broke into a Turkish vessel. One seafarer was killed. 15 others were kidnapped and taken to the Niger Delta before being released for an undisclosed ransom. Today, piracy in West Africa is on the rise. Since 2020, 180 seafarers have been kidnapped as they pass through what's become known as Pirate's Alley. It's getting worse because um, there is hardly any week now that you don't get to hear about pirate attacks. 97% of recent kidnappings at sea occurred in the Gulf of Guinea, making this region that stretches from Gabon to Liberia the piracy hotspot of the world. Pirates attacked an oil supply vessel, taking the captain and chief engineer hostage. So why have these waters become a magnet for maritime crime? And why are countries struggling to keep pirates at bay? This is the system error that has led to piracy thriving off the coast of West Africa. This is our 27th day in captivity. Our kidnappers are losing patience. They are concerned that there has been no response at all to their demands for money. In 2009, a British couple sailing from the Seychelles to Tanzania were abducted by Somali pirates. At the time, Somalia was the epicentre of maritime piracy. Somali pirates have been attacking ships in the seas off their coast for years. Pirates are still holding close to 500 hostages in more than 20 ships. Pirates would board vessels, drop anchor and ask for ransom money. The threat provoked a response not seen since World War II, when all five permanent members of the UN Security Council agreed to deploy armed forces on the Somali coast. The only viable long-term solution to this Somali piracy problem is to restore law and order in Somalia, including in its waters. Since then, piracy on the east coast of Africa has been in sharp decline. But on the continent's opposite coast, a new band of pirates have emerged. The pirates, armed with AK-47s and powerful speedboats, are from the Niger Delta. The pirates are armed with sophisticated weapons, some of which the security operatives do not have. They move on the waterways and basically they see their targets and they attack. They take the people they want to take hostage and then zoom into thin air. Once captured at sea, those kidnapped are taken to swampy mangrove forests. When they put you on phone with your people, they will threaten that if you do not make the money they demand available, you are going to be killed. Hostages are held until ransoms, which have been known to reach millions of dollars, are paid up. The story of how these gangs became the most dangerous threat to maritime trade begins over 60 years ago when oil was first discovered by Shell BP in Nigeria. Shell was the first to export oil from Nigeria in 1958. Shell is Nigeria's oldest private sector energy company and has a long-term commitment to the country and its people. While multinational companies and the government have made billions of dollars over the years, that success has come at great cost to the local population. By Shell's facility, polluted it which causes all the fishes to die. Since production started, tens of millions of barrels of oil have been spilled in the Niger Delta, destroying the livelihoods of the local farmers and fishermen. If you look at the ground here, you see all this is, is the crude oil. Look at it, see, it enter into the ground, soak it throughout, look at it, all over. With poverty on the rise and multinational oil companies getting richer, Robin Hood-like groups in the Niger Delta organized. We are sick and tired of this shit. This struggle is not all about me. It's all about the Niger Delta people. If this continue, what do you expect from my son? What do you expect from my child? 
these militants sabotage pipelines and stole oil from cargo ships to reclaim what they felt was rightfully theirs. They are hard there to stop the operation, blow up the pipelines. They are not out there to kill humans. But in 2016, as the price of crude oil plummeted, a growing number began kidnapping foreign crew members for ransom. Today, these pirate groups are not short on new recruits. Poverty in the Niger Delta is persistent. We have very many people that are finding it difficult to survive and live by the sea. We have very many of them. To make matters worse, foreign fishing vessels from the likes of China and the European Union are plundering the seas off West Africa. As with oil, the demand for the region's fish is high, but locals, once again, aren't seeing any of the profits. Nobody will want to move out of his or her comfort zone to go on the river and become pirates, except the person is driven by hunger. Piracy in the region is thought to be far worse than official numbers suggest. The reports we are having about pirate activities in parts of the Niger Delta and the Gulf of Guinea is even less than what is happening. Vessels are often reluctant to call local authorities for help because they themselves are breaking the law. Because the seas and open space can also be exploited by criminal elements. As well as piracy, crimes such as illegal fishing and summary executions can take place with little risk of prosecution. For many countries, uh, governing or policing the maritime space is, 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 is a major challenge. The Gulf of Guinea, like many other waters across the world, is confronted with a number of transnational crimes. Some vessels have been taking matters into their own hands. Foreign trailers coming into the Gulf of Guinea for fishing. Sometimes they attack the local fishermen because when they spot them around the the ocean, they feel that they are that they are pirates and they attack them. I have uh, phone calls from communities that uh, they have been attacked by some of these boats that come from outside. I get phone calls about their situation and they call me to come and help. The problem is that policing one sees is very costly. You are talking about enormous resources that are needed, both in terms of surface ships that must be at sea and other surveillance equipment that are needed. Piracy makes that demand even more difficult because you are thinking about criminal elements that, that enjoy a high level of mobility and you are trying to trace and track them down, fix them and arrest them, and that is a, a major difficulty. The international community does have the military resources and it is keen to deploy these in the Gulf of Guinea. but they can't do what they did in East Africa. It's absolutely important to see cases that are different. If you want to replicate something that worked in Somalia, you're bound to fail without understanding that the context is completely different. Unlike Somalia, West African nations aren't failed states and don't wish to have their sovereignty undermined. But they are keen to see the issue go away. For a region that is already struggling, in terms of its economic survivability. Increase in, in freight rates and increase in insurance translate into higher costs of doing business and higher cost of buying ordinary uh, goods and services that the public needs. So this has also got significant implications for, for the region. But these countries are not well prepared to tackle piracy. Africa's colonial legacy has meant that few countries have developed their own maritime forces. Colonial rulers used local populations for their armies, but their own navies for the seas. None of the new colonies actually feared an attack by the sea from their neighbors. Securing the regime was focused on, on the land rather than the sea. And because of that, you, you have relatively few sizable navies on the, uh, on the continent. Nigeria has recently taken bold steps to get rid of its piracy problem. But as pirates move across sea borders, a joined-up approach is crucial. While the 25 countries along the Gulf of Guinea have been teaming up, finding a way forward takes time. Depending on who you ask, they might say that there's been uh, 
they've been slow in the way they are responding but i can tell you as someone that is very familiar in terms of the research that i do and also engagement with this the people that actually implement some of these policies that they are doing the best they can a military solution on its own may not solve the problem in somalia the international crackdown on piracy led to offenders switching to other criminal enterprises yes there's a need for military response but centering this this is absolutely the wrong way to go because what you end up doing or might end up doing is actually that yes you fight piracy at sea but then you redirect the crime to something else and when you talk about security you should not only be talking about the gunboat security you shouldn't just be talking about the uh, helicopter security you should be talking about human security as well you're talking about food security talking about social security these are the kind of security that should be put in place securing a livelihood for pirates is more likely to address the problem benefiting both them and their victims i recommend the carrot and stick approach while you are supporting the security architecture, you are also using the carrot approach to provide incentives and alternatives for the youth who are involved in this. So I was able to penetrate some of those uh, pirate gangs and, uh, and uh, talk to them. And uh, a lot of them are willing to stop if they have alternatives. 